let's take some questions on this a and b become partners for 16 years a pays b a premium of rupees 5000 at the end of 8 years there is dispute between a and b and they declare dissolution of firm a a can get back the entire amount of premium paid by b to him b a can get back a reasonable part of the premium c a can get back rupees 2500 from him d a cannot get back any amount of premium paid by him the answer is reasonable part okay next loss arising out of partners insolvency can be recouped from the a solvent partners b the firm itself c the partners estate d the partners legal heirs if you know there is a partner who has become insolvent and the firm is being you know dissolved so the loss of that insolvent partner has to be borne by whom is it the solvent partners is it the firm itself is it that insolvent partners estate or that insolvent partners legal heirs it is to be borne by the solvent partners partners who are solvent they only will bear uh, the insolvent person cannot bear it his legal heirs won't bear it the firm means all the partners and one of which is insolvent so firm won't bear solvent partners only will bear okay next at the time of dissolution of a firm every partner or his representative is entitled to have dash applied in the payment of debts and liabilities of the firm a assets of the firm b property of the firm c liability of the firm d goodwill of the firm so we have already you know done this question we know that when dissolution happens the partners can ask that the properties or the assets of the firm may be applied because liability cannot be applied goodwill does not have any value if the firm is being dissolved so what remains is assets and property so the answer is property of the firm okay next when a partner's capital account has a debit balance and he is unable to bring in necessary cash to make up the deficiency it is called a loss on dissolution of partnership b loss on dissolution of firm c loss arising out of partners insolvency d loss on distribution of assets so here there's a debit balance in the partner's capital account and he is not able to bring in cash that means he is not able to pay his liabilities so in that case it will be called as loss arising from the insolvency because insolvency is a state where your liabilities are more than your assets and you cannot pay all your liabilities here the partner cannot pay his liability towards the firm so he will be considered insolvent okay next the private property of any partner shall be applied first in the payment of a firm's debt b joint debt c personal debts d unsecured debt the private property means when the partner you know is bringing in some property because the funds in the firm are deficient so when he brings in the property when he brings in further capital when he brings in cash this amount is to be first applied in the payment of his personal debts not the firm's debts that is you know 
if any loan he has given to the firm or if any amount is payable to such a partner is to be paid through this additional amount okay next on dissolution the partners remain liable until a public notice is given b the registrar strikes off the name c partners dues are paid off d accounts are settled so they continue to remain liable until public notice is given okay next x y and z are partners in a firm y and z died in an accident x continues the business in the name of the firm here x cannot continue the business of the firm b x can continue the business of the firm c x alone cannot run a firm d x and legal representative of x and y will have to run the business of the firm now there were three partners and two partners y and z died so now x wants to continue with the business he continues the business so can he continue the business is he allowed to do so because in a firm you need more than two or more persons can he continue with you know the legal representatives the answer here would be he cannot continue with the business of the firm because on death of partner maybe one or two how many partners you know it doesn't matter if there is a death of a partner then the firm has to be dissolved so for dissolving the firm the business of the firm has to be stopped so you cannot continue with business however for dissolution you can complete the unfinished business you can complete the remaining pending transactions okay next abc is a registered firm c died on 30th june a and b sue x in the name of abc what is the consequence a the suit cannot be maintained b the suit can be maintained c the suit can be maintained when the firm is freshly registered d none of the above the answer here is the suit can be maintained even though one of the partners has died to recover the amount the firm can always file a suit against the outsider next the amount received by a partnership firm from the insurance company on the maturity of a joint life policy taken by the firm will be distributed amongst the partners a equally b in the ratio that is the psr c in the ratio of capital balances at the beginning of the year d in the ratio of capital balances at the end of the accounting year you now partners have taken a joint life policy and the period of that policy has expired now they are getting you know the return of that policy whatever the sum was to be received on maturity they are getting it back so now this sum has to be distributed you know equally or in the psr in the ratio of capital balances at the beginning of the year or you know the capital balances at the end of the accounting year how should it be distributed the answer is very simple it should be in the profit sharing ratio okay now this is always the logic whatever amount comes to the firm it has always to be distributed in the profit sharing ratio now if the profit sharing ratio is equal then it will be distributed equally you know that is you know an automatic rule but whatever the profit sharing ratio may be in that share sharing ratio it will be 
distributed. Next, X Y Z firms consist of four partners. That is X Y Z and A, having one fourth share each in the profits of the firm. According to X Y and Z, activities of A are not in the interest of the partnership, and thus want to expel A from the firm. Advice whether A X Y and Z should seek retirement from the firm. B No X Y and Z cannot expel A from the firm. C Yes X Y Z can expel A from the firm. D None of the above. Can X Y Z you know expel A or they can't or they should seek retirement or none of the above. The answer is X Y Z cannot expel A from the firm. Why they can't expel from the firm? Because partnership deed needs mention of expulsion clause only when partnership deed allows you to expel a partner you can expel him so the only option here left to x y and z is to dissolve the firm next the surplus remaining after settlement of debts and liabilities of the firm in case of dissolution shall be a credited to central revenue account of the government of india be credited to reserve bank of india c distributed among partners equally be distributed among partner according to the profit sharing ratio again this is very simple it should be distributed among partners in the profit sharing ratio